Welcome back to the Land of Unpopular Opinions, and I will be doing for the first time, maybe ever, in actual proper order, a wrap-up. <laughs> I hate TBRs, which is why I literally don't do them, I never stick to them, but wrap-ups are something that I've been finding pretty fun. Like, if I have a similar taste to someone, I think it's pretty useful to watch wrap-ups because that's where you get actual thoughts about a book. Not just a summary and like, oh, I think this will be a cool concept. You get actual thoughts about a book and real recommendations. It's almost like a recommendations video, just disguised as something that I read. So we will be doing a wrap-up for July. July is not over, but it is currently the 29th and I have no motivation to like suddenly read five books in the next several days. So. I will let you know what I plan to still read by the end of the month and what I've started reading so you can include it in the list but I just wanted to do it a little earlier because editing so let's just get into it. Now the first several things that I read in July I have things on my tablet in front of me are things that I will not really be going into depth because I have three hours worth of vlogs and that is I finished the Attack on Titan reread that I was doing and I finished it till volume 22 I believe and then I read Anne of the Island which is book three of Anne of the Green Gables and I've been reading Anne of Green Gables on ebook because I have the entire box set and then if I like the book I will order it and have a physical copy. I do not yet have a physical copy of Anne of the Island but I absolutely adored it I gave it five stars and I think I read it in like a day because it was perfection. The first three books of Anne of Green Gables are everything. If you like cottagecore and soothing, peaceful, heartwarming stories that will make you cry not out of sadness, you need to read, read Anne of Green Gables because Lucy Maud Montgomery, I think her name is. She writes in a way that is beautiful and lyrical, but she also has such a sense of humor that I did not expect in a classic book. So it really took me by surprise. And Anne of the Island, I don't think it's my favorite book so far, but I cried in the end. That's all I will spoil for you. I cried in the end and she writes characters in a way that it's realistic and believable why they behave the way that they do. And I expected this story to be a little different than what it actually was because I watched the old Anne of Green Gables like it, it, mini series with why can I not remember <laughs> with Megan Follows which was excellent but I was like oh th this part is going to be really boring in the books not how it happens in the books the book is actually perfection I will get into it because I did not really read the next Anne book because it was hella boring and I just skipped through it so I didn't even log it into Goodreads so and of Windy Poplars, I think I will not be buying that or reading that again because I just do not have the capacity to care about random characters four books into a series, but Anne of the Island was absolutely worth it. And if you liked Anne of Green Gables, any of the shows, I highly recommend it. It will be a comfort read that will still somehow get you to cry and I have no idea how she does it. hydration. <laughs> Anywho. Anywho. That was a little bit of a break. The next book that I read, which I rushed to finish, even though I logged that book onto Goodreads in December. December. I finally, finally finished Children of Dune. I finished the Great Dune trilogy. I returned it to myself. As you can see, I finally did it. I was going down to the seaside for a holiday and I wanted to finish it before then. I finished the last 150 pages that night. It took me like four hours and it's a long, long book with like very tight spacing and it's large so it's not like the small paperback. It was long but I did not regret a second of it. His writing style, as I already said in my favorite books of 2020, his writing style is something that you have to get used to. I will never preach to anyone that it's easy to get into. It isn't. 
But if you do get into it, you know exactly what's going to be next. Like, he doesn't really change his writing style. It's exactly what you're used to. So if you get used to it and you like the story, you will enjoy the rest of it. I will not be reading any more than this because I see no need. It ended actually perfectly and I googled summaries for the rest of the books. I am not even a little bit interested. But Children of Dune was a conclusion to a trilogy that took me ages to read but I do not regret that I read it. It was absolutely great. I was skeptical when I saw it wouldn't be following some of the characters that you follow in the beginning near the end but it all without any spoilers, it all just comes together beautifully <laughs> and in my opinion in a satisfying way and it's just a wild ride. It's a saga about the Atreides family and it should be treated as such. Like there are other, other characters but the Atreides are pretty much who you have to follow. <laughs> Nothing else is really that that emotional to you, I think. If you get attached to them, that's that's kind of it. And Children of Dune was an example of a book where <laughs> it was good that a lot of time passed because I was a little pissed off with the beginning because I read it right after Dune Messiah. But now that a lot of months passed and I just picked it back up again, I was able to get immersed and love the new characters and absolutely enjoy all the new dynamics and his little philosophies as he just throws into the book. So a worthy conclusion, a lovely, lovely trilogy. Definitely not one of my all-time favorites, but very close to it. Like, very, very close to it. It's just a little taxing to read, which is what I have to say. I would not pick up Dune <laughs> as a pleasure read or if I wanted a break because it's very tiring to get through it, especially in one chunk. So I would read it over time and I will definitely read it again. But for now, I'm just really happy that I finished it. And I gave the last book also five stars, I think 4.5, but on Goodreads, it was five. So yeah, definitely The Great Dune Trilogy by Frank Herbert. I am so happy I finished it before the movie. Highly recommend because it was excellent. If you can get past the writing style, you're good. Next up is a book that I buddy read. I never do buddy reads because usually the person that I read with takes like 16 years to complete it, the chapters that I did, and I get bored. So I just finish it on my own. But this buddy read was actually lovely. I did it with Amy from Booktube with Amy. I am not sure how to do the text thing, but maybe I'll just insert it before the book. And it was a wild ride because we spoiler alert, did not enjoy the book. But on the plus side, at least we both didn't enjoy the book. I think it would have been a whole lot more boring if I was raving about it and she was just sighing at everything I said. So it turned out good in the end. <laughs> the book is Uprooted by Naomi Novik. I, I have words to say about this, but we have a project about it planned that we're going to do together. So I will not not dish on it too much but I gave it two stars I think like 1.5 but I'm not really doing half stars on Goodreads unless I really feel like it so it was two stars if we're gonna be realistic it was two stars I wish I could give it less but one star is, res is reserved for things I really hate I didn't hate this like I don't have strong feelings about it I just have no feelings about it <laughs> like no feelings about it at all I don't hate it. I don't love it. I think in like a week I will forget literally everything that happened in here. Everything felt inconsequential, easy, like low risk, uninteresting, really forced. There are some other adjectives that I could give and my cat is climbing the shelves. Can you please not? So yes, this was a bust. And I have another Naomi Novik. Will I read it? Maybe. <laughs> Because I bought it, I always read the books that I buy. So I will read it, Spinning Silver. And Catherine Arden is raving about her so much, but they are friends. So maybe that's why she's raving about it, not necessarily because it's good. But yeah, I will read Spinning Silver eventually, just not very soon. This was not a good commercial for Naomi Novik. This is just another proof that you cannot do fantasy standalones. I'm sure there are some. But I don't believe it because fantasy standalones are a slippery slope because you need to introduce the characters and the stakes and the love interest very quickly and make it believable. 
This was not believable. It was over 400 pages. I believed nothing that happened in here. Did I enjoy something? Sure. And, like the atmosphere of the woods and like the whole vibe of winter because I it's Russian inspired. We already know that I love everything winter inspired or forest inspired, but that's about it. That is literally about it. Did not like the characters, did not like anything that happened. I have nothing else to say. We will rant about it later more. Is she thrilled? Is she thrilled that I am ranting here? No. No, she isn't. The next book that I will be talking about, unless she kills me, <laughs> is the manga that I started in July. You can go now. You can go. <laughs> it's the manga that I started in July. I've been a bit on a break since I finished Tokyo Ghoul because that took a lot out of me. But I'm not sure if I read this in July, but I logged it in July. I read Jujutsu Kaisen Volume 0, the one with the second years being first years, and I loved that one. I gave it five stars. Jujutsu Kaisen is a manga that I will not be reading in general because, not to get on an anime rant or anything, but I was looking for an anime that was finally like a little bit more fun than, de than depressing <laughs> because I was coming off like my Attack on Titan and Tokyo Ghoul High. So I found Jujutsu Kaisen and I found season one really fun and entertaining while also kind of serious. And then I found out that the manga is just straight up depressing so I will not be reading it. I have no interest in reading it. I read the summary of everything on the wiki for the fandom so <laughs> so I yeah shenanigans of the cat today that's what you're getting I read volume zero because that was the only one that I didn't want to skip because the movie is coming out read it loved it but I will not be reading the rest I read just the summaries so that's it on that manga and also I will be reading Maybe that's why I'm saying it, just so you know. I was thinking of starting Seraph of the End from where the show leaves off because the show is done, but the manga isn't. <laughs> so I'm just debating if I should start reading it or not. Let me know if you recommend it. I already read ahead because I finished the show last night and I'm way too impatient, but I think I'll give the manga a try. It's been a while since I really got into a manga, so... That's it for now. And now the last book that I'm in the middle of will be the last of this wrap up, which somehow is way too short because I did not read much in July. But I think it's still kind of fun to talk about everything you did read and how you feel about it. Like not everyone goes on Goodreads. I absolutely get that. Now there are two books that I'm in the middle of. 1984, still listening to it. I am not in an audiobook mood, but I listened to a couple, couple chapters while I was on holiday. And I read Kenobi. Oh my god, I forgot about the book. I'm reading Kenobi currently. I am like at part two or like just over 100 pages. I am enjoying it. But as usual with Star Wars books that aren't really like about the main story, there's a lot of other stuff that I can't get myself to care about. Like when it's chapters and chapters of side characters, I will just flip through it until I see the words Ben or Kenobi. So that's how I usually read Star Wars books that are about extra stuff. But I am really enjoying it actually. It's quite fun to see what... This was written near the end of George era, so it's very fun to see how he imagined or gave them the permission to imagine Kenobi while he was on Tatooine with little Luke and I am still waiting for little Luke to show up so I will update you on that but I am currently reading this I have no real thoughts and now the book that I forgot about because for some reason I forgot to log it onto Goodreads but it's a reread and I don't feel like pulling it down right now I reread uh, V for Vendetta. I just took it one day on the beach and what do I have to say? I, I read it last year for the first time in English. I It's one of my favorite everythings of all time. Graphic novels for sure. Alan Moore is just brilliant and co combined with David Lloyd. It was just perfection. I think I figured some things out a little better than last time. Like the ending for example was a whole lot more clear. 
But V from Vendetta is something I would recommend literally to everyone because it's it's satisfying in a very, very strange way. I think some a lot of people would say that he's morbid, but he is very, very positive in a very uplifting way while also concealed in like dark plot and ideas. He's really somber, but he is actually also full of hope. So that's what I love about him. And I'm really happy that I reread it. It's always going to be a five stars. And now I'm going to add it onto Goodreads. That about concludes this entire video of wrap ups that I have not done ever <laughs> because I don't do wrap ups. So I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you want it more detailed, if you want it more structured because this was a bit more rambly and I just put pictures up, not actual books because I don't have some of them. But let me know how you like your wrap ups and if you even enjoy your wrap ups because I thought this was a little bit fun and it's not a long video to do. It's kind of a reflection on what you did. And I think that's cool because unless you follow my Goodreads, you have no idea what I've been reading for like the past half year. So I think these are pretty much useful for a little bit of a catch up if you don't want to watch the age long vlogs that I do, which I will do my best to make shorter in the future. So I am back to making videos. I'm going to try and make them as often as possible before university. So the next two months, let's hope that I will post shorter and more enjoyable videos. Let me know if you enjoyed it again, and I will see you in the next video.